We're on the record. All right, this case uh, D598770. Hansen case. Um, parties just noted that uh, their appearance on the telephonic record. Were the, uh, are the Hansons together? Is that correct? No, Mr. Hansen is on the phone. Ms. Hansen is with her counsel. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. <laughs> Let me, because uh, a lot of this obviously has to do with the current financial situation. Um, and this would uh, come back on, on you, Ms. Primus. Let me, uh, let me, for the record, tell you how we got our calculation. I realize your client's alleging he's not making as much overtime. Gets alleged all the time. I can only go off what you guys have submitted to us based on his paycheck stub. His year to date was 71,804. Uh, divide that by 129 days. That's 556.62. Times that by 35. I'm sorry, times that by 365. That's a total of 203.167.26. Then you divide that by 12, and again, this is how I make my law clerk do everybody's financial disclosure form down to the day, he has a net, I'm sorry, gross monthly income of 16930 61 So it is not the 11000 and the 2000 that he's indicating on his current FDF. Are you there, Ms. Primus? I am. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to respond to that. I, I don't know how you I mean, that's what his paycheck stub indicates he earns. Us to well, date. well, I understand that that's his year to date, Your Honor, but the last four pay stubs indicate that there is no overtime. As Your Honor knows, obviously, in the last two months, um, there's been significant changes to a lot of people's work situations, and part of his change has been that there's been no overtime. Um, I mean, I think that the issues here go far beyond what the child support calculation is. Uh, so, 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 I mean, at this moment in time, obviously if we were at trial and setting child support, you know, for a permanent post-decree issue, I would have testimony given by his, uh, you know, uh, Anybody who could speak to that, whether that's an HR person or whomever that is, at this moment in time, all I can do is show his pay stubs if your honor is taking year to date versus actual income, showing four pay stubs worth of no overtime. Um, your honor, I don't believe that that's an accurate reflection of his income. Um, you all the time, Ms. Primus, I, again, I don't know if you're on the other side of cases or you've been on the cases, but it happens all the time. All I can do is take his current year to date, and that's more than, and, and that comes out to more than he was alleged on his uh, initial FDF. I understand that that's the honor's position, and at this point, if that's how your is going to calculate it, um, you know, we will deal with that. Again, the issues are far beyond the child support, so. I mean, we're, we're in a position, Your Honor, where yes, my client says he's not making overtime and his pay stubs show that. We also have a situation where mom allegedly isn't working at all and making zero money, yet alleges that my client should be paying $6,000 in expenses for a business that she is supposed to be yeah. running and earning income from. Um, it's a community business as well. Let's keep that in mind. It is a community business, and, and one of the issues that the parties, is, uh, you know, given the current circumstances, obviously uh, that area has dropped off. I, it may be picking back up, but 
I don't know if they're going to go forward with that, but if they're losing money in that business and they are and they already have a bit of unsecured debt, I don't know if it's a situation where they're they're going to consider a, a bankruptcy on that or not. I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take for that business to build back up. Your Honor, I, I, I understand that. Okay. Um, the the issue that we have, Your Honor, and again, if Your Honor is going to set child support based upon his year to date, that's fine, and we'll deal with that. I'd rather frankly address the other issues in my motion that I believe are of higher importance at this point in time because the parties really are frankly just bleeding money and they can't afford to keep going down this road which is why we filed our motion. Okay. Again, based on his, I don't know what he did with his extra income then, Ms. Primus, because again, here's what I've got based on your client's FDF. Um, Taking that sixteen thousand nine thirty minus his deductions. Um, hold on a second. That's still thirteen thousand four sixty one minus his what he's been paying out. He's still showing that he's netting thirty nine thirty six a month. You mean based on the? Uh his expenses FDF. on his income or on his FDF? Yes. yes. So I don't know what he was doing with all the money when he was raking it in in the early months of this year. You don't want me to average it in through these last couple of months, but on average through this month, that was the average. I, I understand that. And as I said, if that's how your owner is going to calculate child support, we will deal with that. I, I I'm not talking I'm, child support. I'm talking all their community expenses. Right, which he's been paying. Right. So I, I, so I'm not sure. He's been he has been paying those. The purpose of my motion regarding the expenses was was really just to get a confirmation that instead of giving her money because he had previously been giving her money to pay the expenses. And as you can see by the exhibits attached to our motion, they were unpaid for several months during that period of time that she was supposed to be maintaining them. He's now maintaining them, and, it, and in addition to that, providing her with what we thought was an appropriate amount of child support. Um, but that was the purpose of that portion of my motion, Your Honor, was just to confirm the order that he would continue paying all of those bills. He has brought them current. As of the date of the filing of our motion, the power, the water, the HOA, the sewer, the car payment, and the trash bill were all several months past due during a period of time that he'd been providing to mom at least $4,500 a month to pay bills. And on top of that, he was paying the HELOC, he was paying the mortgage, he was paying an additional car payment, as well as some credit card debt. Um, so... We're asking simply for a confirmation. Since the last order was unclear, the last order said status quo. We didn't know what that meant. We did try to resolve that through counsel. Mom then changed counsel. I have worked with three different counsels on her behalf to try to resolve what those, what that means. But the fact of the matter is that the bills went unpaid for several months when Dad was providing money to Mom to pay them. They are now all caught up and continue to be paid. Your Honor, do I get to speak now? Hold on one second, Counsel. The, the, the way I always have read status quo in my, in, with the attorneys that come before me is status quo is all the payments that he's making on his FDS, he will continue to make. And I think he was also paying her additionally 2304 every uh, two weeks. No, Your Honor, no. Those expenses laid out on his, and I apologize if that's a, a misrepresentation by my office. We included all of the community expenses on his FDF, which is what we always do, the way the parties had been operating, uh, which she also included on her FDF. Obviously, it's not reasonable that they both are paying those. What we had done was put all of the, uh, excuse me, all of the community expenses on the FDF. That wasn't what he was coming out of pocket for. 
So both parties' original FDS included 100% of the expenses, but neither party was paying 100% of the expenses at that moment in time. Obviously, otherwise they would have been double paid. Your Honor, so, on page 11 of my opposition and counter motion, um, we lay out the, um, I lay out instances of the differences in the general financial disclosure forms and what information is reflected. And I think you see, I totaled them all up and based upon what um, Mr. Hansen is willing to disclose and the, the math computation just doesn't work. I mean, unfortunately, in this entire law and motion practice before the court, the math is all over the place. It's contorted and no reasonable and prudent person with a calculator can actually make sense of Donovan's math. So the difference in the monthly expenses, he understates them by a total of $8,212.81. In addition to that, the difference in the assets and debt is a, a whopping 981000 and some change. And the difference in the unsecured debt is um, 14000 and some change. I mean, come on, Your Honor. We don't even have a clear picture. I think he's produced like four, three to five GFDS to this point. He can't get, he can't get the numbers straight because he's not giving you the straight numbers. May I respond to that, Your Honor? The numbers in the party's FDS are different, and this isn't the first time we've seen that. But you have to understand that in our original FDS, she valued my client's PERS at 900, I'm going to get the exact number here in a moment, but um, get at uh, $921,000. As you all know, the PERS doesn't have a a set value at a moment in time. That's part of the big reason we have a difference in the value of the assets is that she has attached an almost million dollar value to my client's PERS. Um, but the other point is which we is, agree. Which is understated. Oh, Hold way. on. So you cannot cut her off. We were making a record. Okay. Sorry about that, Your Honor. Thank you. We would agree that the party's expenses are more than the income and that's why again in our motion first of all to the to the point of my simple request that the order be that donovan continue maintaining the expenses if your honor's interpretation of that is that he will continue paying the expenses on his fdf then that's fine that's all we're asking that's all we're asking i was trying to avoid a situation where my client may be alleged to be held in contempt which is happening anyway but I was trying to avoid a situation where he would be alleged to be held in contempt because he stopped giving her money he was previously giving her because of the fact that the money he was previously giving her was to pay bills. But if Your Honor's interpretation of status quo language, excuse me, language, is that he would continue maintaining the bills he was maintaining or stayed on, on his EFF, that's what he's doing now. And so that's, that's fine. Um, the only point was that the understanding between the parties was different than the court's understanding, and it was meant that she would utilize the money he was giving her to pay bills. She did not do that. He had to bring them current, and he's now doing that. Um, but to the point of the expenses exceeding the income, we may disagree as to how much they exceed the income, but we certainly agree that the expenses exceed the income, which is why we're also asking that the house be listed for sale. These parties do not have enough money to maintain their expenses. No, One of I, their I cannot do that unless the parties agree I have a trial issue. Okay, Your Honor. Um, I, I would just like to just continue my argument on the issue just for the record. I, I understand that that's already Your Honor's order. Um, one of the big expenses is this HELOC that's related to the business that is maxed out. And I understand that in the past couple of months, she may not have been able to run the salon, but the salon was open for more than a year before that without her actually running it, without her actually earning any income. And to that point, um, you know, on the issue of transparency, Your Honor, we have a problem here where we've disclosed and continue to, to disclose all of our accounts. We have not seen a single account from this business, and my client has 
physically gone to the bank to try to get statements, and he's unable to do so because he doesn't have access because she has taken away his access. So the, there. Are, the, what the discovery commissioner is about, that you know how you know I, how it works. I understand. I understand, Your, Your Honor. I, I, my point in that, the, the end of that was going to simply be they're alleging all sorts of misconduct by my client, but my client has been extremely forthcoming in producing documents, in paying the bills in pay, maintaining expenses, in providing her child support, albeit perhaps a different calculation than your honor is coming to, but at no point has he with, cut her off from money, cut her off from accounts. Their opposition, your honor, alleges that he has cut her off from their medical card. We've attached a document showing that she has been using that card all year up until a couple weeks ago as recently. So... There's, there's a lot of sort of back and forth and p finger pointing towards my client and potential misconduct by him, but other than calculating his income differently, he's been completely forthcoming both with the opposing party and with the court. Tim, I am going off it, and I know you don't. I, the point is, if he wasn't making those payments before, logic says that that money's gone somewhere, Ms. Primus. Let me ask you this question. What to his, his June 2nd FDS, he lists that he has total monthly expenses of ninety-five twenty-five. Does that include yes. everything that he's paying her? No, he is now paying all the expenses. Previously, the money was going to her to pay the expenses. His I'm June 2nd... Yeah, his June 2nd FDS is... You mean, does that include the child support he's paying her? I'm asking if that includes everything that he's paying her regarding her household. Nine thousand. Rega yes, regarding the household. Yes. And then, and then he began paying her child support. And I apologize, Your Honor, that that is not included on on here. But as far as bills, he is paying that cover it covers everything in her household: her mortgage, the HELOC, the expenses. Right. Is listed, is included in these. And, and Mr. Kelsey, I promise you'll have the, because the, I've gone through the numbers as well. And again, I don't know what it is. Your, your client is a, a battalion chief. He can maybe ask for his own overtime. I don't know. If he can't, then we'll maybe reassess it in a couple months. I can only go off the numbers that I have. And let me go over them again. When you, you have a gross of 16000 Money. You take out his deductions, which are thirty four sixty nine, and his monthly expenses of ninety five twenty five. He still has a net of almost four thousand dollars. I, I hear you, Your Honor. I, I hear you, and I can't. I, I mean, the fact of the matter is, I've already said this, but I'll repeat it again. I understand that that's the year to date numbers. But at this moment in time, for at least the last four pay stubs, as you can see, that's not actually what he's taking home. And, and as to answer what he was doing with his income three or four months ago, I would he obviously... Prob probably should have been saving it then. Well, Your Honor, as you can see from the FDS, the parties also have extremely high credit card debt, which he does make payments on as well. Listen, all I'm confirming is the agreement before that it remains status quo. We'll go off his current FDS. Again, uh, that, those total monthly expenses are ninety five twenty five. We're going back with uh, he has a net. It's it's just under four thousand, but it's thirty nine thirty six. I'm going to order, and again, I'm not going to break it down right now. Or I, I mean, I could, if you want me to get on the calculator real quick and find out what child support should be, but. Um, it was going to be twenty five hundred dollars in family support, and he keeps the other fifteen of the uh, the, gr the net that he's getting. Okay. That that the numbers are what the numbers are, and if you have to file something in another three or four months, and it's gone down, then we'll reconsider that. But right now, as I have them, he's netting four grand.
Okay, Your Honor. I mean, obviously, I can't agree with. with I mean, I, 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 I don't agree with that. But I, if that's Your Honor's order, then again, we will we will deal with that. Are we back to then? What was he doing with all of the extra money before? Well, Your Honor, he was providing money to her and paying some of the bills. That you said that that and that's included in the deductions that I just included. He was previously giving her forty-five hundred dollars a month, as well as that's paying not, them. Okay, and then if nothing else, he's not going to have to do that anymore. He's only going to have to give her twenty-five. I understand, Your Honor, but he is now maintaining 100% of the expenses. As to what he was doing with his money before, Your Honor, I guess that's a, a trial issue. If it's an issue at all about where his money was going, I mean, there there's no waste claim before, Your Honor. It's, it's just an issue of how the bills are going to get paid. And, again, if Your Honor's order is that he pays her $2,500 in family support at this point in time, even though that's not where what he's actually bringing home, because Your Honor doesn't want to wants to use a year to date where he has lost income, just like everybody else in this economy through this coronavirus situation has lost income. Then I have to accept Your Honor's order at this point in time, and perhaps, like I said, if it's a trial issue and I and I bring in testimony as to his actual income. I'm not quite sure what else Your Honor wants me to do other than show what's on his actual pay stubs. So at this point, I understand Your Honor's order, and obviously my client will comply with it. I, all right. Again, I will. Uh, it'll be modified to where he pays her $2,500 a month in, in family support and pays the $95.25 in monthly expenses as listed on his FDS to clarify what status quo and, and what I meant uh, the previous time. Mr. Kelsey, do you have anything else for right now? And listen, I, I don't know. Listen, and this, I guess, goes to Mr. Kelsey talking to his client. I mean, you're, there's got to be a reality check to where you have a, a sinking hair salon business um, and I don't know that she's going to get a huge amount of support for a long time to be able to survive. Am I getting her through litigation? Absolutely. Um, I, I just, they might want to go to some sort of financial advisor and to, to decide what they're going to do with the business and, and everything else. That's just, I don't know what else to suggest. I've had some discussions with my client, Your Honor. There's continuing discussions with both the uh, landlord with regards to the community business and, and trying to work through them. And there's going to be some hard decisions that need to be made. Um, and But this is the first step uh, with regards to getting her some guaranteed monthly family support, which, um, again, is uh, the numbers are all over the place. And, and clearly, when you're looking at a at a total of approximately sixteen thousand dollars a month going out the door, which includes the expenses for the community business, uh, there's definitely going to need to be something done um, to bring that down, and we will work on our end in that regard. Um, but we also have the issue of she's been so underpaid for so long; she has outstanding attorney's fees and costs that need to be reimbursed. Um, we've made that claim with regards to our in our counter motion. Um, she's paid. She's okay. she owes eleven thousand five hundred dollars in attorney's fees. I mean, we're we're not on even anywhere close to an equal footing in this case. Um, okay. Do I consider this and charging case? No, I absolutely don't. I mean, she is getting such the benefit of this financial situation. I'm not I'm not contemplating any attorney's fees. To be very candid with you. Not a chance. She can go out. If she can't uh, make their business survive, then she can go work out as a cosmetologist for someone else. But I'm not awarding, uh, this is nowhere near a sergeant case. Okay, Your Honor. Um, I, I want to make sure I'm clear so I know what 
going, what, what, where we're at. I know child support has been accounted for. You're denying the marital home sale that was requested by Donovan. Um, you're not awarding him attorney's fees and costs uh, by what you're, what you just indicated. Is that correct? I'm not. Okay. Um, then with regards to our claims, you've gone through the child support, uh, cost of suit, temporary support, um, which brings us to the contempt issue. Okay, he, he uh, caught it up by the time the motion was filed, as Ms. Primus has indicated. So, um, again. Your Honor, prior, prior to the divorce proceedings being entered into or, or being initiated by the complaint for the divorce, and even, even some time into these divorce proceedings, my client had online access to all of the accounts so that she can make sure that money's not disappearing and going somewhere. Um, you've already indicated that you're, you're wondering where $4,000 a month is, has been going. We do too, and I have Mr. Donovan's deposition, uh, Mr. Hampton's deposition lined up for Friday, so we're gonna try to figure that out. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, he's, he's cut her off of her ability to continue to track where the money's going so that he can that, put it elsewhere. Discovery. Listen, you both, it sounds like, need to conduct discovery both ways. Yes, Your Honor, we're, we're doing that. We're, we're in the process of doing that. Again, I have Mr. Hansen's deposition lined up for Friday, um, and there's going to be, I think we might need to get an expert involved with regards to PERS. Um, there's also a, a, a custody issue, and I saw a reference before I came on to the case that you wanted the parties to have a child custody evaluation. My, my client wants that to take place. Clearly, she can't afford to pay the amount of money that it's going to take to have that conducted, which, in, in per my knowledge, is somewhere between ten and twelve thousand dollars. So we'd like you to have Mr. Hansen pay for that. Um, and that was, you know, we have to. I, I don't know. Right. In looking at their. Again, they have sixty-three thousand in unsecured debt. Hello. Hello, and Hello. the the four four fifty-seven B is is what is what is that, Miss Primus? What is that, like? What is that account? That's that's my client's four fifty seven for comp. There is a, there is already a loan out on that account. Of thirty four, he still has a net of ninety right now during this COVID crisis. They're not. They've waived most fees for taking anything out of retirement accounts. So now would be the time if, in fact, uh, he's going to access that. Your client, if you guys can't agree on custody, uh, that was the intent back then because they did have that money. Yeah, Your Honor, my client's actually not opposed to a custody evaluation. Um, I don't know if, because there's already a loan on it, I don't know if he's able to take another loan on it. Um, I've already talked to him about the fact that something would need to be liquidated to do a, to pay for the custody evaluation. I would, I, would, I would ask. I would have to see that in writing because, again, with everything going on, Everybody is waiving a lot of stuff, including people that work for the city, the counties, everything else, regarding any fees, penalties, tax assessments, anything to access their retirement fund. Right, and, and again, we're not, we're not opposed to that, Your Honor. We would ask that it be equally borne by the parties in that the division of that account, be, when that the account is divided, it be taken in, the cost be taken into account as a community I, expense. I agree with that. I agree with that, absolutely. 
Okay, then we'll go forward. I'll have my client look into whether he can. Obviously, if he's told he can't, I'll get a letter. Um, the the other issue then becomes who would conduct the evaluation. I, I, I have a know. name of a, a court-certified psych, psychologist um, that I can provide to counsel, Your Honor. Uh, I have that experience from another matter. Um, and she I'm sure Ms. Pritchett more than has a speaker. So let's let's get it on the record as to who it's going to be. Yes, Mr. Kelsey, who's your proposal? Uh, I don't have her name in front of me right now, but I can I can I can get that information very quickly. I, she does uh, this all the time for family courts. Your Honor, I would propose that we use Dr. Paglini. I I have no problem with Dr. Paglini, and I do not use Stephanie Holland if, in fact, that's who it was, Mr. Kelsey. It's not, and I'm trying to remember her last name. It, I think it starts with a B, and I, but I, I don't know Dr. Pelini. I, I, if you don't have a problem with it, Your Honor, we don't have a problem with using that. He is one of the uh, premier evaluators at Family Court, so I absolutely have no problem with Dr. Pelini. That's right. okay, Your Honor. His name in the order. And I'll have my client reach out to him regarding what that's going to cost, so that he can then look into liquidating that account to the extent necessary. Listen, and, and on that, Ms. Primus, while we're at it, again, because it's community funds, because I don't, I don't, you truly don't want another motion in another three or four months. If, in fact, he truly can show on paper, given the court's figures that I've given you, that he is not going to be able to make those payments, he is welcome to access more than that. And you're just going to have to get the accounting to Ms. Mr. Uh, Kelsey regarding where that money is going for those set bills. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. I will, I will sit down personally with my client and go through his finances and figure it out. Okay. Let me, for the record, because I, 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 I don't like later on if we have to go back for, um, and your issue regarding contempt, Mr. Kelsey, I'm, I'm just going to say we'll just, we'll deal with the time of trial. The issue will be deferred. Um, okay. Twenty five hundred. I put the numbers in the uh, Nevada Child Support Guideline calculator. One hundred in there for um, um, the petitioner. I'm sorry for uh, mom. She has zero income as of right now. So the number that I get is fourteen seventy three. So. To clarify, the twenty-five hundred would equate to fourteen seventy-three in child support and one thousand twenty-seven in spouse support. Okay, Your Honor, can I argue the contempt issue since you're reserving it for trial? Can I make a record on that, please? You can make a record, but we're not going to do anything about it today. I understand, yeah, Your, Honor. Defer, Your Honor. I prefer that we don't. Your Honor? Well, I'll let her put a couple lines on just like you did. I mean, I just simply deferred it, but it's not going to make a difference, Ms. Primus, so keep it to a couple sentences. I, I simply want to say that the requirement for contempt is a clear and concise order. The order that they're alleging contempt of, specifically the order from the last hearing, um, says status quo, and that obviously is up for interpretation, given that Your Honor reads it one way, and the counsel meant it a different way. Um, your Honor, I had a couple other issues that I was hoping you could address today that I've attempted to address through counsel, and I'm just not quite sure what to do. Not if they're not in a motion in front of me, I can't. Uh, okay, Your Honor. I, I mean, it. it my, my my client's trying to get his personal belongings and then firearms back, and I can't get a response from opposing counsel, Your Honor. And it's it's your, normally your Honor, issue. Your Honor, in a motion. Dial three. Okay. And go with Metro. I'm sorry. Mr. Kelsey, he's entitled to get all of his personal property that he wants at this point. So, if he dials three one one and goes over there with Metro, they will give him half hour, forty five minutes to get his. Phone. I simply wanted to get a date on the record that he could come do it. We agree, Your Honor. My client's position is, and I've seen the list. She says that he's gotten all that already. He can do it tonight. Tonight? Uh, Donovan, let me just ask him, Your Honor. Donovan, are you back in town? 
Yes, I'm in Las Vegas. Okay. So how about tonight at 6 o'clock? Again, that's not a – you guys are going to want Metro there. What happens is he goes, like, to the closest 7-Eleven. They meet him there. They follow him over to the house. It's a very low priority thing for them, so he may be waiting around a couple hours till they actually show up, um, and then they will go over with him to the house. Thank you, Your Honor. My understanding, Your Honor, of the process is that he can call ahead of time, and they will give, and they can meet. They can have an approximate time that they'll meet him at a location that they'll meet him at, and then he can meet them there, and then they bring him over. He usually. Pursuant to my understanding, he has about 15 minutes to get all his stuff together, which, by the, again, my client says he has all of his stuff, so um, he may want to make the proper plans to uh, get things done that he needs to get done, he believes. All right. So Mr. I, I, I yes, Ms. Primus? I apologize. I just wanted to clarify that Your Honor is requiring a civil standby for him to go get his belongings. I would, we would prefer yeah. that, Your Honor. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of acrimony here. Absolutely, a lot of acrimony. Mm -hmm. So I would okay, strongly thank you. suggest. It. All right. So I'm going to set a 90-day status check date regarding. Um, uh, Dr. Polini's report. And given everything that's so complicated with the business with the debt that they have, with what they're going to do going forward, whether she's going to be able to afford the house. I'll just let you guys know that, um, and again, since he has a deferred comp account, I'm likely to have them do six hours of meeting. Uh, they far exceed the amount for a senior settlement judge. Uh, so if you guys want to ever do that, even before the Dr. Polina report, you're welcome to do that. And so then we can set both at the same time is, in fact, we have to set a custody trial and a financial, but that has to be by stipulation. Doing the trials at the same time, you mean? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. Okay. All right. Madam, Madam Clerk, can you give me a 90-day status check date uh, for Dr. Polina report? September 10th at 1.30. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, everybody have a good day. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Okay, right. thank you, Your Honor.